Hi, and welcome to our pilot of The Savvy Entrepreneur, where we discuss entrepreneurship and economics. In today's episode, we'll be meeting Mandy, who is the co-manager of La Vida Bell Cafe here in downtown Longmont, Colorado. We will be discussing the social and economic impacts of the COVID-19 virus. Hello everyone, this is the pilot episode of The Savvy Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Talis, and today we're here with Mandy, one of the managers at La Vida Bella, a local cafe in downtown Longmont. Mandy, how are you doing today? I mean, pretty good, all things considered. You know, the world is the world right now, but overall, optimum and positive spirits. Awesome. Uh, best that can be expected based on the circumstances. Yeah. <laughs> so for those who are not aware of La Vida Bella, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about the business and tell us how this outbreak has impacted what you guys are doing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so La Vida Bella is a model that's being developed in Longmont, Colorado of a gathering place essentially for creatives, anyone looking to try out new coffee, variations, um, cocktails that are craft made. We have delicious cuisine. And of course, we emphasize community with a variety of different events. And it's impacted the business in a variety of ways. Um, as a startup, one that had actually just campaigned to gain some capital and take off in a variety of different directions, such as with a new menu, we've had to entirely halt. And that's put us in a very precarious position, to say the least. Yeah, so your fundraise was like a week before this whole outbreak happened, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> and we had some pretty um, good interest, I'd say, by a variety of investors. But of course, you know, following the stock market crash and just the uncertainty of how things are going to play out, um, that's been put on hold as well, which is understandable. Um, you know, I don't blame anyone for wanting to just play it safe in the time being. Mm -hmm. but as people who are taking a bet on a business that's for the community, um, it's very difficult. And I mean that in place of the owners as well, who have given so much to develop this vision. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it from an investor perspective, you can't really blame them because, you know, oh. it's their hard earned money and they're trying to Absolutely. have it come back to them at some point. Yeah, definitely. But at the same time, a lot of people, I think, have the perception that there's good communication between the federal government or state government and local businesses. Mm -hmm. What kind of communication have you guys had with the uh, state or uh, federal governments? Yeah, so little to none, thanks to our general manager, Matt, um, who has been doing most of the research to figure out just what options are available to employees, what the business needs to do. Um, we've been able to get an idea of what we should be doing during this mandated 30 day shutdown. But overall, no one's contacted the business. Um, Todd, the, I'm trying to come up with the right word, he doesn't like owner, <laughs> um, but Todd, the owner, he has been able to postpone the mortgage payment for a couple of months, which is helpful. Um, and these are things that had to be sought out though as well, you know, in terms of like uh, postponing taxes, for instance, as well, so that we can get back up and rolling. And as small business owners, or as small, I'm sorry, I'm stumbling right now, but as developers of a small business, like other people, we've had to basically seek out what options there are. Yeah, and that those options haven't been clearly defined or uh, offered to anyone as far as I know, the stimulus package is still having passed the House and not gone through the Senate yet. Um, there are some interesting legislative fixes that they're trying, but it's going to be interesting to see what actually comes out because mm -hmm. what the, the starting point is not uh, going to be what it finished it. Uh, I, now I'm just stumbling on my words. <laughs> <laughs> So when legislation is going into the Senate from the House, there is often massive changes that occur. So mm -hmm. while there could be some really cool stuff in this current iteration, uh, chances are with the Republican held Senate, there's going to be a bunch of things that we would have liked to have in there, but aren't. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of things do you think would help your business? Well, 
There are a few things. I mean, in addition to potentially taking care of Americans themselves for the stimulus package, um, it'd be great to see an alternative to taking out a loan just because it's going to put businesses back even farther from where they are. Um, and there's mixed feelings about it because, you know, billions of dollars have been funneled to Wall Street, um, but nothing's coming to small businesses, which are made up of people who need to pay their rent. And, you know, just any alternative at the moment would be ideal. But. Yeah, it's tragic. Uh, statistics I've read said 25% of the working population are being dramatically impacted by this. Yeah. And that's predominantly just the service industry people. If you think about the knock-on effects to that, I would say that's probably at least 75% of the working population that's being impacted by mm -hmm. this type of uh, disruption in economic activity. Yeah, and this is like one of the most vulnerable populations. And according to a recent statistic that I was reading about, approximately 70% of Americans don't know where their next paycheck is gonna come from. So being forced to shut down for 30 days, you know, there's going to be irreparable damage. Things are going to change as a result. Um, but the clumsy response to all of this is going to make it worse. Unfortunately, you know, that's why we need competent leaders who understand the needs of all people. <laughs> what? I wonder what that's like. I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that uh, if there was a centralized response, this thing could have been handled more effectively. Mm -hmm. But yeah, look at South Korea, for instance. Yeah. Um, they isolated the elderly population. Um, business actually resumed as normal, but they took certain precautions and had a curfew from my understanding and within two weeks it was gone. But because we have such a mixed and convoluted response to what's going on in the United States and we are already such a divided nation, um, there hasn't been a concise effort to tackle what's going on and that's going to hurt you know, the workforce even more because who knows how long this could last. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, I grew up in Bakersfield. My mom is mm -hmm. in the medical industry out there and she was saying that Bakersfield wasn't having a ton of uh, instances of coronavirus until San Francisco and New York had a shutdown and two idiots drove to Bakersfield because they thought, oh, let me just stay out in Bakersfield and you know, live normal out there. But yeah. then they end up infecting a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, based on the demographics there, I can see some massive things happening. Just today was when they shut down the mall. Yeah. Places in LA had their mall shut down for two weeks. How are you able, how are you gonna be able to curtail an outbreak if one place is shut down, one place is completely open, 100 miles away from each other. Yeah. Like there's gonna be a ton of people traveling between one place and the other. Absolutely. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, it's... <laughs> so tell me about your employees and what you guys have had to do in order to make sure that um, your business mm -hmm. is uh, doing the right things financially. Yeah, so Tackling the COVID-19 issue, we've taken a few different approaches to tackle it. First of all, um, because we don't have the funds to pay payroll for all of our employees, we've created a GoFundMe campaign. And it's something that is very humbling, you know, having to ask the local community for that assistance because we love our team. They are a family at the La Vida Bella and everything that's being done there is you know, from the heart, it's to nourish people in a variety of ways. And when we can't give back and take care of our employees in that same way, it's it's crushing. Um, but through this campaign, uh, we've raised a little bit so far and that's really hurting. You know, I know that so many people are struggling in this moment, but yet the outpouring of love, even if people aren't able to make a financial donation, shows just the spirit of the human race and the spirit of this community. Um, and so that's been heartening. From a business standpoint, we've cut as many expenses as possible. Um, you know, the moment we heard that restaurants had to close for 30 days, we sent back all perishables. Fortunately, that was the day of the delivery. That helped cut some of the costs. Um, we went through all and took inventory and everything that we had. We gave a lot of our perishables to our staff. That which wasn't taken, we gave to the homeless shelter. Um, and we're able to just, you know, sort of create a clean slate for when we're able to start back up. Um, 
Some of our staff members have actually taken on temporary employment, such as King Supers, and that's a local supermarket which has been very gracious with people who have been hit by um, these hard economic times. And for instance, when Lucky's Market had to close down, they and a variety of other stores offered employment without even having to really go through many hoops. So um, the community supporting La Vida Bella employees in that way is encouraging as well too. And in this time, because it's not feasible to stay open and still offer curbside takeout or delivery, just because that's not really our model. Um, and even businesses like Rosalie's, which you know, primarily could do pizza deliveries, um, they're closing down. So in this current state, what we're doing is we're conserving resources, we're pulling energy back into the business, we're reorganizing, we're getting all of our own ducks in a row so that you know, the week before, hopefully everything opens back up, we're just gonna launch harder than ever and um, hopefully have really solid footing to welcome employees back again. You bring up a good point. Um, when you do welcome employees back, what if they are gainfully employed in some other industry and Mm -hmm. don't necessarily have the ability to come back. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's a risk, um, one that we accepted when we had very honest communication with all the employees as well too. We said, hey guys, this is a situation. Um, we don't have enough for enough paid leave essentially for all employees. Um, those who want to collect unemployment, you are able to do that. We gave them that option. One person did. Quite a few people said, you know, I have another job or I have a little bit of savings. I'll be okay right now. Um, some other people even donated to the campaign, which was, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> talking at your heartstrings right there. It's a great group of people. Um, but for those who have had to take up temporary employment, I understand it's like investors choosing to hold. Um, if I was an investor, I would as well. You know, it's a very uncertain time. Um, but for those who have had to temporarily leave, there's a chance they might not come back. And that sucks, but ultimately we want what's best for everyone, you know? Yeah, absolutely. If that's what they have to do to make things work in their life and support them and love them, yeah. Yeah, hopefully, you know, our legislators come up with a solution to give some stimulus to these small businesses yeah. because honestly, I can't imagine the financial impact and toll that this is going to have on this community. Yeah. Downtown Longmont Main Street, that's the heart of Longmont. Mm -hmm. How many restaurants are, I mean, I would say at least 50% of the businesses on Main Street are, are restaurants. Mm -hmm. If and they're all probably experiencing a very similar situation as La Vida Bella, maybe even a worse situation because they maybe don't have the flexibility or the resources that you guys have. Yeah, cool. And what would this town even look like if half of the businesses on Main Street are shuttered? It would be crippling to say the least. You know, um, Longmont was named as the number one boom town in this area. I think it was the entire United States, but I don't want to put that out there totally. <laughs> Anyways, number one boom town, and there's so much momentum behind um, great projects, everything from uh, local setting up period kit making projects um, to what Longmont Public Media is doing to what La Vida Bella Vision and of course you with all your ongoing projects are doing as well too. Um, for us to lose a lot of these businesses, it would be really pairing I think. Um, the other day I was running through the park and it just kind of brought it all back to me and seeing groups of homeless people who don't have anything actually in this time. They're even more vulnerable than everyone else in this situation. And it, it strikes the reality of um, persistent conundrums such as homelessness and people not being able to afford rent, unfortunately are going to get worse without the right action to you know, assist in this. Um, and without restaurants, which plays such a big role in the entertainment community and you know, um, inspiring people to come out, I think the culture itself would suffer too. Um, just what everyone is trying to develop here. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, La Vida Bella was the last concert venue in Longmont. Mm -hmm. And you know, music, I think, is, is very important for livelihood and the community morale. Mm -hmm. So where yeah. do you see this going? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> um, I honestly don't know. I don't know. And that's, um, I, on my own platforms, I've been speaking a lot about you know, this is a time when we have to have faith and we have to think intelligently about what action can we take right now and what things are out of our control. And those things that are out of our control, um, such as knowing where this is going or how the community is going to be affected, um, to some extent, we just have to trust that 
those people in this community um, will rise above and work together. And no matter what happens, we'll figure out how to support each other and how to come back from this because that is the human spirit in a nutshell. Like the fact that people have been in lockdown and um, dancing, you know, in Spain, for instance, and singing songs together and just keeping their spirits high and coming out with comedic gold in memes, for instance, <laughs> that shows that I think collectively we're getting stronger as well. Is we're bonding through this tragedy and finding humor, and that will be a cornerstone in moving forward and figuring out how what to do with this mess. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, thinking about moving forward. Um... You know, some, this is a opportunity for anyone who has, you know, unfortunately been displaced mm -hmm. because of the virus to spend some time doing something that they're passionate about. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us for this important discussion about this deadly virus. By you staying at home, you're saving lives. So thank you for taking the sacrifice that it takes to just stay at home and do nothing. We will be having a weekly discussion on topics of business and economics. So if you are interested, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for our next episode. Thank you very much.